Well, we spent a whole lot of time looking at conditionals, and conditionals express efficiency, which is a truth relationship. Well, now, this time, we're going to look at a different truth relationship, necessity. We've already talked about one kind of truth relation, and that's sufficiency. And if you remember, sufficiency means that if one proposition is true, then another is true, right? If one proposition is sufficient for another, that means if the first is true, the second one must also be true. So if my pet is a dog, then my pet is a mammal, right? My pet is a dog is sufficient for my pet is a mammal. Necessity is different from sufficiency. It's another truth relationship. You remember a truth relation is where the truth or error of one proposition makes another proposition true or false. Sufficiency means true makes true. Right? Necessity is uh, a truth relationship between propositions such that the error of one proposition means that another is false. Right? Or false makes false. Yeah. So, you know, looking at some propositions here, my pet is a mammal is necessary for my pet is a dog. If it's false that my pet is a mammal, then it's false that my pet is a dog. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but, but we don't want to confuse sufficiency and necessity. Yeah. There, there's some other propositions that are necessary. Uh, if an organism is a plant, or, sorry, an organism is a plant is necessary for an organism is a tree. Okay. Organism is a plant is necessary for an organism is a tree. Uh, a figure has four sides is necessary for a figure is a square. So sufficiency and necessity are, are, are kind of, in a way, real similar. But let's not confuse them, right? Sufficiency means the truth of one means the other is true. And necessity means the error of one means the other is false, right? Error of one means the, uh, the other is false. Now, a sufficiency and necessity, they do actually go hand in hand, right? If one proposition is sufficient for a second, then the second is necessary for the first. My pet is a dog is sufficient for my pet is a mammal. Well, on the other end of that, my pet is a mammal is necessary for my pet is a dog. A figure is a square is sufficient for a figure has four sides. A figure has four sides is necessary for a figure is a square. Um, an organism is a tree is sufficient for the organism is a plant. The organism is a plant is necessary for the organism is a tree. So sufficiency and necessity are not the same thing. They're not the same kind of truth relationship, but you can't completely separate them. If one proposition is sufficient for a second, the second is necessary for the first. Okay, so that's sufficiency and necessity. Now the question is, how are we gonna express these as propositions? So we've discussed necessity as a truth relation. That's where the error of one proposition means that another is false. All right. Now here's the question. How do we express this as a complex proposition? So remember where we dealt with sufficiency? We had that kind of clumsy phrase, is sufficient for? And we said, you know, an animal, it, my, my pet as a dog is sufficient for my pet as a mammal. Right. And yeah, I mean, you, you can do it that way, but it makes reasoning very, very clumsy. It makes reasoning and discussion pretty uh, difficult. So we, we replace that, you know, is sufficient for with the uh, connective if then. We also use only if and since and all these other versions of it uh, for, for conditionals. So uh, we're going to do the same thing uh, with necessity. So if I, you know, we're dealing with sufficiency, we say, my, you know, my pet is a dog is sufficient for my pet is a mammal. We say, if my pet is a dog, then my pet is a mammal. Right? If a figure is a square, then the figure has four sides. Uh, if an organism is a tree, then the organism is a plant. Right? The first, the antecedent is sufficient for the consequent. Well, and let's think about necessity. Right? We have this phrase, is necessary for. You know, my pet is a mammal is necessary for my pet as a dog. And that's pretty clumsy. And trying to reason that way gets, gets complicated. And we could create, I suppose, another connective for this, but that gets a little cumbersome. Right? That gets a little cumbersome, and we really 
uh, don't uh, want to go through that, especially since the connectives we already have will work to express necessity. So uh, we'll use our conditionals and our negations to express necessity. So remember, my pet is a mammal is necessary for my pet as a dog. Right? Well, we'll use the conditional. We'll put negations on each of the propositions. We'll have you know the one that's necessary for the other to be the antecedent. So uh, it, if it's fault, uh, if my pet is not a mammal, right? if my pet is not a mammal, then my pet is not a dog. That expresses necessity from my pet as a mammal to my pet as a dog. If the figure does not have four sides, then the figure is not a square. If the figure does not have four sides, then the figure is not a square. If uh, the organism is not a plant, then it's not a tree. So we'll use our we use our conditionals and our negations together as you know a complex proposition, a conditional of negations to express necessity between uh, propositions between pro these propositions. Uh, well. So that, that takes care of the complex proposition. How are we going to symbolize it? OK, so we discussed how we are going to express necessity using complex propositions. It's going to be conditional of negations. Well, the symbolizing it should be pretty straightforward. We've already uh, got our symbolization for uh, conditionals and negations. All right. Uh, so suppose we have uh, our complex proposition express the necessity. Uh, if the animal, if my pet is not a mammal, then my pet is not a dog. Well, following the rules, my pet is a mammal, receives the atomic proposition P. My pet is a dog, receives the atomic proposition Q. And to express this, to symbolize this, we will have not P greater than not Q, right? The not P then not Q, using our uh, symbol for uh, conditionals. Okay. I, so this is really not, like I said, we're not going to invent a whole new connective for this. <clears throat> we're not going to invent a whole new symbol. We'll just have not P, then not Q. And this expresses necessity from P to Q. Well, you might wonder if we have any new rules of implication for uh, necessity. Well, the answer is no. Uh, necessity. Yeah, you know, we have the conditional. So all the implicate, rules of implication that we have with uh, the, the conditionals is going to work the same for necessity. You can have modus ponens using necessity. Right? If you have not P, then not Q. Well, you can assert not P and therefore conclude not Q. You've got modus tollens. Uh, if you, by the way, <laughs> since, uh, uh, you know, modus tollens, you're probably going to use double negation in there. So if I have not P, then not Q, and I have Q, right, then... Uh, I'll have to double negate Q to get not not Q to infer not not P, and then probably use double negation again for P. So that, that so for modus ponens and modus tollens, it works exactly the same way. If I have not P then not Q and not Q then not R, then I can include not P then not R using hypothetical syllogism. I can even have uh, conditional proof, right? Suppose I have uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, not P then not Q. And then if I assume for the sake of argument, uh, not Q, then not R, then I can infer uh, from that, you know, using co conditional proof, uh, use a hypothetical syllogism, then not P, then not R, then finish with our conditional, right? <laughs> Giving our assumption, not, not Q, then not R, then not P, then not R, right? So all of that well, works the same way using the rules of implication. We don't have a new rule of implication, but we do have a new equivalence rule. So the last equivalence rule we had was double negation. You remember, it's where we could take a proposition and swap it out for uh, the same proposition, but with two negations in front of it. And on the truth table, it has exactly the same truth values, right? And we could just swap it out, right? We could swap out a single proposition with that same proposition or two negations. We can swap out a double negated proposition for just the proposition. No problem, easy peasy. Well, we've got a new equivalence rule dealing with uh, uh, necessity is called contraposition. Contraposition. Okay. Now remember what I said earlier. You know, the reason why we could do this. Remember what I said earlier. Sufficiency and necessity go hand in hand. Okay. If I have my proposition express a necessity from uh, uh, P to Q, if not P, then not Q, that is logically equivalent to 
a, pro a conditional expressing sufficiency from Q to P. Right, so if P is necessary for Q, then it follows necessarily that Q is sufficient for P. Similarly, if Q is sufficient for P, we can, it's, uh, what follows necessarily is that P is necessary for Q. So suppose we have our conditional here of negations, not P, then not Q. Well, I can swap that out. I can swap that out whenever I want uh, with a conditional, uh, repl you know, taking conditional still containing P and Q, but we take away the negations. We swap the position of P and Q. Right? So not P, then not Q is equivalent to Q, then P. By the way, any proposition you know, where I got Q and P, right, if Q then P, I can swap that out for another conditional where I you know, you know, uh, switch positions for P and Q and put a negation in front of them, not P then not Q. And we could do this wherever this formula appears, like anywhere, if it's embedded in there, right, we can swap it out, no problem. So contraposition is an equivalence rule that allows us to replace any proposition expressed in necessity, not P then on Q, with a proposition that expresses sufficiency, P then Q. Uh, so Q then P. <laughs> Q then P. Make sure you make sure you get your uh, 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 you know make sure you switch your antecedent and your consequent. Okay? So we could take any proposition where the antecedent and the consequent are negated, replace it with a conditional. Right, where we switch positions of the antecedent and the consequent and we take away the negations. Okay. Now we can do this. It's, it's a rule of equivalence. We can prove it using the truth table. Here's the truth table. It's really straightforward. You know, P then Q is exact has exactly this. If P then Q has exactly the same truth values is uh, not Q then not P. Right? That's exactly the same truth assignments as true in the sa exact same situations. And we could even, you know, if we really want to do it, we could even do it with rules of implication. Um, I'll let you go ahead and do that. You'll use pretty much like as I described, right? You'll start with a conditional if P then Q and prove not Q then not P. Similarly, you'll take the conditional not Q then not P and prove the conditional P then Q. You're probably going to use conditional proof, double negation, modus tollens, modus tollens along the way, right? And that'll be fun. That'll be fun. <laughs> uh, okay, so that, that's our rule. Uh, that's our equivalence rule. We can swap out those conditionals whatever we want. <laughs>